Good morning, everybody. Uh, please join us this morning for our Holy Communion service, Wednesday, this Wednesday morning, knowing the Lord's with us. So we'll just hand over to Cheryl, and she'll lead us in First Order Holy Communion. So we're on page 101 of our prayer books. The Lord be with you. And also with, and you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts, all hearts are open, open. All, all desires are known, known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration, inspiration of our Holy Spirit, Spirit that we may perfectly, may perfectly love you and worthily and 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 magnify your holy name. Your holy name. Yeah. Through Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. It might be best if you guys mute yourselves. Uh, it's just going to make it a little bit easier. We're on a time delay, so YouTubers are getting a bit of a garble. Yeah. Yep. And over the page, page 102. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Lord, Lord have, have mercy on, on us, and write your law in our hearts by your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, give to us the increase of faith, hope and love, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us to love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we have the reading. Well, we have, uh, we'll have the, the psalm. Oh, we'll start with the psalm. Psalm 19, verses 1 to 6, and that's on page 239. Page 239, Psalm 19, verses 1 to 6. And we'll read this in alternate verses. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day tells it to another, and night to night communicates knowledge. There is no speech or language, nor are their voices heard. Yet their sound has gone out through all the world, and their words to the ends of the earth. There he has pitched a tent for the sun, which comes out as a bridegroom from his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run his course. Its rising is at one end of the heavens, and its circuit to their farthest bound, and nothing is hidden from its heat. We'll turn now to our reading. Our reading is from Jude, the letter of Jude. Uh, there's only the one chapter, so and it's verses 17 to 23. But you, beloved, must remember the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. For they said to you, In the last time there will be scoffers indulging their own ungodly lusts. It is these worldly people, devoid of the Spirit, who are causing divisions. But you, beloved, build yourselves up on your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life, and have mercy on some who are wavering, save others by snatching them out of the fire, and have mercy on still others with fear, hating even the tunic defiled by their bodies. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I'm just going to switch over. I won't be able to see you guys on Zoom now because I'm switching to my sermon. So here we go. So Jude uh, 17 to 23. Um, the pas this passage is preceded. Um, we'll just reflect on this a couple of moments. It's preceded by what is really quite an apocalyptic uh, and end times uh, letter all rolled into one. Uh, where Jude is uh, condemning, really, the false teachers around at this time, whose behaviour is also immoral, licentious, in, in the way that they were living. And this is clearly a serious problem uh, in the church at this time. Even in the early days of the church, this is a problem. But Jude is writing specifically here to Christians, 
to reassure them and teach them in the face of all that this is going on here. And Paul begins the, this section by addressing his audience as beloved, as, as um, um, Jude does, as uh, often Paul does and Peter does as well. These false teachers, he tells them, don't, they're not just spreading false teaching, they are indulging in ungodly lusts. It sounds quite nauseating, really, what you read here, and even a little bit nerve-wracking. Some of them even claim to be spiritual. But in fact, they are without the Spirit, he says. They are devoid of the Spirit. God has and wants nothing to do with their ways. In fact, his wrath is coming. But there are things that we can do or things that we know or remember uh, in, in the face of what is happening here. And there's at least three things here that, that um, Jude is talking about. Three things that are going to be helpful. And we think of our times now uh, where the church has been in all this trouble and turmoil as well. Firstly, uh, Jude says, it's important to remember that all this has been predicted. There's no surprises here. Uh, God's not surprised and the church shouldn't be either because the apostles have already predicted that this sort of thing is going to happen in the church. God knew it all along that it was going to happen and Jude wants to remind them of that so that they, they remember that God is still in control. He's not surprised by this. Secondly, Jude says, people are to devote themselves to their own spiritual growth. This is where the focus, our focus needs to be. Don't let what is happening around us distract us from our own development in the faith. That, that will always mean being focused on Christ, of course. And the third thing is that people is to people are to reach out. This is a time to reach out to others, kind of those who are weaker in the faith, who are affected by false teaching, by what, what's going on. It's not a time to withdraw into our own sort of spiritual comfort zones. The end is coming, uh, Jude says. The, and, and the church, early church, was often on about this. And I don't think it means that they thought it was going to happen next year. It is just that this world is so fragile um, that we need to remember that the end is coming at some point. And there's an, there's an urgency about that. And so we need to firstly hang on, hold on, uh, know that and wait for God's mercy, wait for the mercy of Christ. But secondly, we also need to reach out to others as well, those who are struggling. So Jude places an urgency on this, but an urgency not to go out and harangue people. It's an urgency that's tempered by mercy and therefore love. In other words, love people into the kingdom, lead them into the kingdom. Don't push them into the kingdom. Uh, so that and, and teach them, show them what is right and true, not just in what we say, but in what we do in our own lives. And I, I think this message here, written two thousand years ago, is just as relevant for today. That's that's really the call on the church, is to be generous and loving and help those in particular who are being affected by what's happening in the world around us. And boy, we all know them. Sometimes it can be our own kids, you know, mm. and our own families. So let's pray. Lord, uh, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we have your love and mercy in our own lives. Though we didn't even deserve it, Lord, you have reached out to us. Help us to be like you. Lord, in the way we communicate with others, the way we relate to others. Uh, with your mercy and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. And at point uh, 11 on page 103, we say together, We, we believe in one God, God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for all people and for the church throughout the world. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy apostle <coughs> to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We ask you in your mercy to receive our prayers which we offer to your divine majesty. We pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the ways of righteousness and peace. We lift up to you the United States of America with seven more days until their election. Lord, we pray for a peaceful election so that people won't feel like they're under oppression when they go to the votes, the voting areas. And Lord, we pray for your protection on that nation as they wait. Uh, until the Electoral College cast their votes and as they wait for the inauguration on the 20th of January. <coughs> and we pray, Lord, that you will guide the rulers of all the nations with wisdom and justice for the tranquility and good of all. Bless especially your servant Elizabeth, our Queen, her representatives and ministers, her parliaments, and all who exercise authority in this land. Lord, we thank you for Daniel Andrews, our Premier, and we pray for Scott Morrison, our Prime Minister. Lord, we pray for all the Premiers and for the National Cabinet as they meet to decide when and how to open up borders and reunite our great country as one. Grant that they may impartially administer justice, restrain wickedness and vice, and uphold integrity and truth. We beseech you to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in the unity and godly love. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers. Lord, we uphold our Bishop Paul, our Archbishop Philip Freer, and all the local ministers caring for people in this time of COVID, in whatever shape that takes in each locale. Lord, we pray that by their life and doctrine they may set forth your true life-giving word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And to all your people, give your heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present that they may receive your word with meek hearts and due reverence and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We ask you of your goodness, Lord, to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity. 
Lord, we lift up to you Melissa and her family as they mourn the loss of Melissa's mother. We continue to pray for those who are recovering from surgery. We give you great thanks, Lord, that Christine Jockey, she's home with the defibrillator working well and uh, convalescing at home. For the others in our number, Lord, who are also recovering, we lift them to you, Cassandra, Bev, Carol, Ian, Lord, we think of those who are having treatment for Mary's brother, Pat John, for Ty's granddaughter, Ali, Anita, Vivian's friend. Lord, for all those who are in need, be it financial, emotional, spiritual, Lord, you know each person's heart. You know us better than we know ourselves. We lift up all the needs to you, Lord, to your tender, loving care, knowing that you will address each need in the order in which it will be best for those people. And we ask you, Lord, to, to embark on that work in us. Lord, we pray for Luke. We give you great thanks that Luke seems to have turned the corner with this latest infection. We praise you for his life, Lord, and for the joy that he brings everyone who comes into contact with him. We continue to pray for Benjamin in the Northern Territory, Lord, going for a job that will be putting him in a more remote area. Such a wonderful opportunity, Lord, for him, a young man uh, with a future ahead of him. And, Lord, we pray um, for the decision makers at the company and for the path that may unfold before this young man. We also pray for Sylvia and for Stuart, Lord, who... Um, We'll be releasing their son even further away from them if he, is, if he gets this role. So, Lord, all the complexities of, of that situation we lift to you and to your tender, loving care, Lord, knowing that you are our father. You are Benjamin's father and you can manage the whole situation to the best and to uh, the good and to the glory of your name. And Lord, for those who struggle in their faith, who struggle to live rightly, who struggle to put you first, those who are influenced by the worldly ways, those who sometimes feel that they're holding on to their faith with a, a very thin thread. We lift them to you, Lord. Strengthen them in their inner beings. Give them such a vision for the future with you that they will be lifted up out of that quagmire of deception and they will see clearly, Lord, the worth and glory of knowing you and following you all their days to their end. We also bless your holy name for all your servants who have died in the faith of Christ. Give us grace to follow their good example that with them we may be partakers of your heavenly kingdom. Grant this, Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Next to our... We'll have a second prayer on page 108. Brothers and sisters in Christ, 
We who come to receive the Holy Communion of the body and blood of our Saviour Christ can come only because of his great love for us. For although we are completely undeserving of his love, yet in order to raise us from the darkness of death to everlasting life as God's sons and daughters, our Saviour Christ humbled himself to share our life and to die for us on the cross. In remembrance of his death and as a pledge of his love, Jesus instituted this holy sacrament which we are now to share. But those who would eat the bread and drink the cup of the Lord must examine themselves and amend their lives. They must come with a penitent heart and steadfast faith. Above all, they must give thanks to God for his love towards us in Christ Jesus. You who truly and earnestly repent of your sin and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to strengthen and comfort you. But first let us make a humble confession of our sins to Almighty God. We say together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge with shame the sins we have committed, by thought, thought, word and deed, against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for all our misdoings. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life, to the honour and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who with heartily repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on you and pardon you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sin. Point 22. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Lord, mighty creator and eternal God. And I'm a bit lost. And then we just uh, go to page 112.24. Correct? No, um, well, you can say that. Oh. Yeah. Therefore with angels. Oh, okay. Therefore with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory to you, O Lord Most High. You can say that now. It's Jude's feast day. Oh, good. Feast day of St. Jude. We praise you for the example and encouragement of your saints, for their witness to the truth of your gospel, especially for St. Jude, and for the hope of glory which we share with them in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, 
and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. All. All glory to you, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and instituted in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we who receive these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who on the night he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. For we all, we all share, share in, in the, the one bread. bread. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ which is given for me, preserve my body and soul to everlasting life. Amen. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for me, preserve my body and soul to everlasting life. Amen. Gave the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Now we say together the Lord's Prayer, top of page 114. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And on the top of page 115. Almighty and ever-living God, we heartily thank you that you graciously feed us who have received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and thus assure us of your favour and goodness towards us and that we are true members of the mystical body of your Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and also heirs through hope of your eternal kingdom by the merits of the most precious death and passion of your dear Son. And we humbly beseech you, Heavenly Father, so to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as you have prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom 
with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. And we say the Gloria together. Glory, glory to God, God in the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And so we have we... a couple of notices. Yes, go ahead. So, yeah. so um, we've got a notice about the op shop. Uh, we've had some inquiries about opening the op shop, but um, the diocese has prohibited people being on the property during the COVID lockdown. Therefore, we haven't been able to make the op shop COVID safe. There are things that need to be done and there are things that need to be sorted out. So that could take some time. So yeah. the notice is now that the op shop will not be open not until we... Let you know. Well, well, we'll let people know when it, when it will be open. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So um, that's just the way it's turned out, and it can't be open until it's COVID safe. Mm. There's a few things to do. Yeah. So we say farewell to our people on YouTube. Uh, the Lord bless you today. See you later. Bye. Bye.